Welcome back to our next module on statics. I'd like to introduce you to this concept by kind of fleshing out a simple idea, a thought experiment, if you will. Let's imagine for a moment that we have this collar. It has bearings on it, so it's allowed to rotate in the horizontal direction freely on some sort of smooth rod. So you can imagine um, just kind of floats along. Maybe it maybe it rotates freely. It rotates freely in this direction, in this direction, kind of spins around the rod, and it can. Um, go horizontally and let's imagine that you, you've probably had a physics problem like this where you apply some force and as a result you're gonna you're gonna hit the collar maybe it's an impact question maybe it's a mass times acceleration question but what's gonna happen is it's gonna shoot with some velocity in this direction so uh, we'll, we'll even give it a mass M so you get an idea of that now that's fairly that's that's fairly typical you've probably seen something like that However, let's change it up a little bit. What were to happen if instead of applying that force in the x direction, we applied a force in the y direction? So take a look. We're trying to move this collar vertically, but it's not going to work. It's not going to want to move vertically because it only is allowed to move in the horizontal direction. The motion is constrained. In this case, nothing's going to happen. You're going to apply the force, it's going to go right to the rod, nothing. However, let's change it a little bit. Now you can imagine we're going to apply a force at some angle theta to the rod. What's going to happen to the collar? How's it going to move? How much of that force is going to push on the collar? How much of it's going to push against the rod? What's going to happen? This is an example of a concept that we know is projections. During this lesson, we're going to look at dot products and look at a couple ways that they can help us in the real physical world. Pardon me if you got some of that cough on tape. Sorry about that. All right, now let's let's take a look at our force that we have here. We're going to go back to uh, we'll, we'll keep the same color. We know that it's a vector, so we can um, separate it into components. We have the vertical component, which is going to push against the rod, which is effectively going to serve the same function as this red bar right here. Nothing. It's going to push against the rod, but it's not going to help. It's not going to move the collar. The second component of the vector is the force in the x direction going horizontally. This is the component of the total force that actually will move the collar. Now, traditionally, what you probably did with you came across this problem in physics is you took the force multiplied by cosine theta. All right, we're going to do three sides, and that's going to tell us how much of the force is horizontal, and we, you might have even said is the force in the x direction. However, we have, a, we have a slightly, well, a slicker way to do this. One of the things that we can do is we can do something called a projection. Let's pretend for a moment that you're sitting right here. This is your eyeball. You're looking in this direction. And the size of the force is going to look smaller to you. It's only going to look this wide. That's all the wider it's, it's going to look to you. You're looking at a projection onto this rod. So we have the force here. You're viewing it. And, you could, you're, and you're only seeing a modified length. Or, or another way that we could do it, and we'll even do it in yellow to kind of get the feel of it is we imagine that we have a light bulb. And of course this light bulb isn't point source, it's you know this entire plane, but when it shines, it's gonna shine here and here and here, and it's gonna shine in this area, but it's not gonna shine right here. The yellow will not shine there, instead you're gonna see a shadow. That is, well that's where we get the name of a projection. So by if we could figure out a mathematical way to do this, 
we could find out what this component of the force vector is by using projections. Now right now you see it's cosine theta, no big deal, but once I start pushing things into three dimensions, now you're going to have some issues. The way we do this is with the dot product. In this case, we're going to, well, let's first change to red. We're going to take force, the force vector, and we're going to take the dot product by the r vector. And in this case, the r vector is going to be, um, is going to be basically the distance of, of the rod. And we say that that is the magnitude of F times the magnitude of R times cosine theta. All right, so this is our dot product. We've seen this before. To get this into a usable form, we're going to have to play with it a little bit. We know that in this case we know what the projection is. We know that the projection is um, the magnitude of F times cosine theta. All right, we know that by looking at the problem. We kind of we kind of see how it works. We're gonna we're gonna try and figure out if we can get that by itself. We're gonna try and see if we can get the magnitude of F times cosine theta by itself and see what ends up on the other side. Well, this is what we're looking for. Let's divide both sides by the magnitude of R. If we do that, we have F dot R over magnitude of R equals, and you know, we're just going to come right out and say it, equals the projection. Now, I'm going to wager that that R over magnitude of R looks mildly familiar to you. And in fact, whoops, let's make sure that's a vector. And in fact, whenever you take a vector dividing by its magnitude, you end up with the unit vector. We'll do that lambda is typ typically how we do it, lambda R, the unit vector in that direction. The unit vector is in the direction of R, but with a magnitude of one. What this means is if we take the force as a vector and we take the dot product times the unit vector, we will find out how much of that force is projected on to this space equals projection. So let's try it up here. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's just say that, um, I don't know, let's say theta is um, 30 degrees. All right. And we'll do this in white so we can see it. We know that the vector force is uh, 0.866 F in the I direction plus now we're going to have to move things around a little bit. Yeah, we can make this work. Plus um, 0.5 times force in the J direction. And go ahead and review your, your cosines and sines or your I's and J's if that doesn't make sense. And we know that R is simply one I. It just moves in the horizontal direction. Actually, you know what we'll do? That that's that's simplifying things too much. Let's let's say that R is 10 feet long in the I direction. Okay. Let's look at this and think about what we know is really the case. We know that really if this is the force, only 0.866 of that force is going to be applicable. If this angle's theta, it's the cosine of the angle. So we know that the applicable amount the real force in the x direction is 0.866 F. Now the real question is, does that correspond with the projection that we've come up with? Well, let's take a look. Let's take, let's, let's find the unit vector first. 
we know that the magnitude of r is 10. So let's take uh, lambda r equals r over the magnitude of r equals 10i over 10 equals 1i. All right, great, great. Now let's take f dot lambda r. That's going to be 0.866i plus 0.5j. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let's uh, put f in there. Oh, we're going to be running out of space here. 0.866 fi plus here we'll cheat. 0.5 fj, and we're going to dot that with one i. Okay, great. Let's see what we come up with. Well, 0.866 fi dotted by 0.866 or dotted by one i is simply going to be 0.866 f, and then we're going to add to that. 0.5 fj dot point i, but j dot i is zero. We find out that the projection. Oh, sorry, that's not the force. That's the uh, the projection is 0.866 f. That corresponds exactly with right up here, force in the x direction 0.866 f. And in fact, in this, in this practice example, or in this practice problem, we see that it's true. In fact, with, with these vectors, this is how we find the projection. On our next session, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking more at the dot product and trying to figure out what more we can learn using this skill. I look forward to seeing you then. Um, in summary, the projection is found by using the dot product, a good way to visualize it or to feel your way through is imagine you're a light bulb. It's turned on and we're looking for the shadow. Or if you're looking at an object, what is its apparent width? How wide does it look to you versus how wide it actually is? This is a concept that we call a projection. We'll jump into it more on our next runaround. Thanks and I'll see you then.